Hello everybody, I'm here with an example of kinetics of particles uh, involving a pulley system consisting of two masses here, mass A which is given to be 100 kilogram and mass B which is 20 kilogram. Uh, there is friction between mass A and this surface and the uh, coefficient of static friction and kinetic friction given. Assuming that the system is initially at rest and you let it go, we want to find then the acceleration of a, B, and the tension in the core. So we want to use the, uh, the principle of uh, the uh, second law, uh, even though the problem could be solved by work energy and indirectly you can then solve for acceleration of A and B and the tension. But since Work energy doesn't involve acceleration. It's better to use the uh, second law to solve this problem. Okay, so the way we're going to solve this problem, actually, I'm not going to go through showing you that uh, the um, motion is going to happen. Coefficient of static friction is usually given so that you could check for motion. And you could actually um, draw the free body diagram and assume that the system is in equilibrium. And if uh, you calculate N and friction force uh, based on equilibrium and uh, see, compare the friction force versus mu s times N. And if that friction force is larger than mu s N, then there is motion. Okay, we know actually that this system is going to move because uh, block A is very uh, heavy compared to block B. But again, that check has to be done in order to figure it out. But I'm not going to go through that. So exclusively, I'm going to use mu k in this problem because the system is moving. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a free body diagram of these. In fact, for the lack of uh, space here, I'm going to actually draw my free body diagram right here on the block. So this is the tension, let's say, if tension in the core. And this is the weight of this object, which would be mass of B times gravity. So that would be 9.81, right? And then similarly, you could, you could notice that the equivalent tension here acting on block A is going to be double that 2T, right? And then what else do we have here? We have a normal force. And since the system is moving down, friction would be opposing the motion. So I call, I'll show friction with F sub R here. And then of course we have the known weight of this, which is acting vertically down. So that would be 100 kilograms times 9.81. Okay, so uh, the next step is to apply the equation of motion. One typical mistake by the way here is that people think that uh, Tension is going to be equal to, for example, they just, you just look at this free body diagram and tension, they set it equal to 20 times 9.81. That is if the system is not moving. When the system is moving, tension is unknown. So you have to actually apply the equation of motion. So if I do this first for block B, which is easy, sum of the forces in Y is equal to mass times acceleration. And uh, you could see that I have T minus 20 times 9.81 equal to mass, which is 20 times acceleration of block B. So let's hold on to this equation. Block A is a little bit more involved because you first you have to find N. So for block A, first we try to find N by taking this to be our uh, positive X direction, and this is our positive Y direction. So if you write the equation of motion first in the y direction, since there's no acceleration in the y direction, so uh, this is going to be in equilibrium in the y direction. So you end up getting n minus, you could see that if we call this angle theta, which is the same angle as here, would be the weight of this, 100 times 9.81 times cosine theta, now, by the way, uh, on the side here, sine theta, as you could see, this is a three, four, five triangle. Sine theta is three fifth, and cosine theta is four fifth, right? So, why don't I just actually erase this for you now? 
and just put 450 here for you because we got to multiply it by cosine theta equals zero. If you calculate n, n comes out to be 784.8 newtons. Then you know what the friction force is. Friction force when we have motion is mu k times n. So take 0.2 and multiply it by 784.8 newtons and then friction force comes out to be equal to about 156.96 newtons, okay? So we need friction force in order to apply the equation in the x direction. So now in the x direction, guys, we have, sorry, some of the forces in x equal, not equal to zero, is equal to mass times acceleration in the x. So another typical mistake, because you think you're doing a static problem. All right, so look at the free body diagram. You have 2t, then you have friction, which is actually acting in the positive direction, right? Which for which the value is already calculated. But then uh, typically, uh, a typical mistake is that you forget the, uh, the x component of this weight, which happens to be the weight, which is uh, 100 times 9.8 on times sine of the angle, and the sine of the angle is 3 fifth. That is going in the negative direction. Equal mass, mass is 100 times acceleration of it. Let's go ahead and clean this up. After you put the value of friction here, right? 156.96, and then subtract this from it, right? This comes out to be um, 2t minus 431.64. Equal 100 acceleration of it. So notice we have two equations that I have in the box. Equation one, let's call this equation two. And how many unknowns do we have? We have tension as unknown here. We have acceleration of B as unknown here in this equation. We have, again, tension and acceleration of A. So that's three unknowns. Notice we only have one, uh, two equations. For these type of problems, the uh, Missing equation is always the kinematic relation. So let me show you for a second, guys, if I could for a second erase this so I can show you what's going on now. The kinematics is, I have a video on this, by the way, similar to this that shows you how you can do this. If you establish the position of these particles from a fixed reference and try to find the total length of the rope, you end up getting 2SA right, two segments of the rope, right, plus one segment of the rope here, SB, equal a constant. And then when you take, go through the derivative twice, that gives you the relation between acceleration. So the missing equation, the missing third equation, equation number three, is the kinematic relation relating acceleration of A to acceleration of B. So now, having three equations and three unknowns, you can solve it any way you like. Maybe one quick way is, say, acceleration of B, for example, is minus 2 acceleration of A. Again, you could make a matrix uh, even. So if you replace this by minus 2 acceleration of A, then you would have a two equations, two unknowns. All right, let me give you the answers. The final answers are as follows. So you should actually work on this. You end up getting actually a negative acceleration for A, which implies that this guy is pointing downward. We already know that it's moving downward. That was our assumption. Acceleration of B should be twice as large, right? See that? So it should come out to be 0.428. These, are, these have units of meters per second squared, by the way. And if you solve for tension, should be about 204.76 newtons. Okay, I... Uh, strongly suggest to actually try to solve these two equations and see see if you get these values and the value of the tension all right uh as always if you uh, like the uh, video you can subscribe and thank you for watching and listening